At Dot Photon, we are changing the way professionals deal with imaging through compression, and there is some quantum physics involved. Which already makes my head spin a little bit. So how about we're going to have a quick look at a, an explainer that we have that you brought along with you, which I think does a pretty good job. Let's have a look. There is a major problem that needs to be solved. Look, here is a microscope, or a satellite, or a camera, and it takes a lot of seriously big pictures. That's great, because now the images are better, but heavier. And this is where the trouble begins. Now you need to keep, transfer, and edit these heavy images, which is tricky, or compress them and lose quality, and that's annoying. Dot Photon is here to change it all. Whilst doing quantum physics experiments, we noticed that most of the data from modern image sensors was truly random, contained no useful information, and could not be compressed. We also found out that by calibrating the camera, we could separate random data from the image information, so that files could be compressed by up to 10 times without losing quality. It means you still have all the benefits of a lossless source file, but save your time and money on transferring, handling and storing images. Oh, and it all came from quantum physics. How cool is that? Dot photon, your images lighter than light. Okay, so I, I do get a That's better sense after watching that about what it is you do. My question is, how did you figure out that you could take out those extra clear circles and still get the same image? Actually, I didn't figure it out. It's my <laughs> colleague who is a very high profile quantum physicist. So uh, he was thinking about for a few years, uh, we were running a photo studio before as our side business and we truly knew the problem of big image files. And he started to try to, find, to look for the approach, how to approach them, how to reduce the cost and the pain of storage, you know, because normally it's very slow to transmit and expensive to store all these raw files. So Bruno tried to figure out what to do and being a quantum physicist, he decided to approach the problem from his crutch. So he went on the very level of the image file format and uh, image information, the information which hits the sensors, the photons which hits, uh, hit uh, the image sensors. And uh, this is uh, where he had the idea of, uh, about the randomness of some information and uh, the one you have to keep and the one you have to, uh, have to um, get rid of. Okay, so just to sum that up. So, so basically you have found a dot photon, what you do is you're able to take the same quality image so you're able to compress it in a way that you don't lose the quality of the image, exactly. but you make the file smaller. Yes, up to so 10 it times helps smaller. Up to 10 times yes. smaller, yeah. which enables you to store it's, more. It costs, yes, exactly. So it's, and it's faster transmission as well. So that's kind of a win-win situation. You have the quality of raw file, of the original file, right. with the size of JPEG. Okay, and you were photographers, of course, yes. as you said before. Yes. So this was a problem. This came from your exactly. life. Exactly, from our pro our own pain. But yeah. when uh, but when we found the solution, we decided it's definitely something worth to bring to a wider audience, and we have to deliver it first to our fellow photographers, and then we realize that the problem is actually much bigger. So we go to all imaging professionals who deal with raw imagery, and the reaction has been. Uh, it was, wow, like the, actually the thickest wall to break these days, and especially in the very early months, was to uh, break the wall of lack of trust to compression because there were so many failed attempts before that we had to run the tests and just to show the image, the original image and the compressed image and their behavior because that they functionality which we preserve. There are plenty of compression formats which look the same, but the beha behavior of the image for post-production, for example, processes is very different for a lossy like JPEG format or the raw format. So for us, it was an aim to show that our image still behaves as a raw image. So, and this is why, yes, yeah, so we had to break this wall. And uh, this is what's important in the end to your photographers and your artists, exactly, right? Is that exactly. they don't lose the quality of the exactly, raw. Exactly, exactly. Now I wanna go back, I wanna uh, talk about the JPEG, especially sure. JPEG Access in just yes. a minute. But before that, can you describe, I mean, even though it was your colleague, it wasn't yours, but I'm sure you shared in this moment, what, what was that aha moment where you were like, oh, this is brilliant. <laughs> 
Actually, um, I think I went to medium format photography and in medium format photography, uh, file size is 100... Medium, medium, medium format. format? Yeah, it's like bigger professional cameras. Okay. And the file size there is uh, now uh, 250 megabytes, just one file. Okay. So the quality is amazing. There's a beautiful photos, mm -hmm. but dealing with it was very, very hard, you know, and the old computers and all hard drives, they are permanently full and it's very slow and so on. So actually when we, when Bruno had this idea and we applied it to our cameras and when I started to deal with these files with ease, when it was faster, when I could just keep some of them, quite a few of them actually on my computer when I was traveling, for example, that was the wow moment because I could truly see the, the potential and the ease of use of that photon. It sounds like it would be an easy sell. Has it been an easy sell? Um, we uh, haven't started to sell it yet because... Well, meaning yeah. <laughs> in terms of convincing, you said your other photographers and such professionals are convinced, but in, when you talk about convincing investors... Um, yes, so it's an easy sell if people can, if people understand the problem or if they have an idea about Im the imaging so they can compare to, to images, the uncompressed one, the compressed and the original one, right? Because if they can do so, this is a very easy sell. It's just one case study, you know, between us and them and they can have a look and see that this truly works. So, is it that obvious though when you look at it or uh, are you... Almost selling you, something that's actually no. You, you can you can start to edit it, and this is where you see the difference. And uh, so it's just basically a few steps. And if people are a little bit into imaging, they they start doing the right steps straight away. So it's basically five minutes to persuade them. Okay. Well, who have you managed to persuade thus far? Oh, uh, your, your principal we're investors. Speaking, uh, so uh, for now, we're actually on, on the round, so I don't think I can say Speak. those names. Okay. Uh, okay. However, we have a lot of interest from American investors. Uh, the one we met, uh, I met in the Silicon Valley with Venture Leaders Trip, mm -hmm. and uh, we have some quite a lot of interest from uh, investors in the medical field because in medical imagery is a big problem too. So uh, uh, if we speak about the, the, yeah, the, the names, unfortunately, still cannot be pronounced. And at the same time, we speak some, with some potential strategic partners because uh, uh, sensor manufacturers, mobile phone manufacturers, camera manufacturers, they are all interested in uh, bringing this solution to their devices. Am I part of your target market? Like a normal um, mobile Apple iPhone carrying? <laughs> um, uh, not probably for the moment, because now it's more for really, if you're a professional photographer, if you like to take raw images with your iPhone, mm -hmm. then you're definitely in our audience. Uh, then it's a very particular thing, and especially these days, because it's 25 megabyte per file per image, so the memory quite, gets filled up quite quickly. So this is why um, it's not very popular, you know, to take raw images with an iPhone so or with any other mobile phone. Uh, however, with dot photon, the size of the image goes to two megabytes, which is a like, regular JPEG size. And this is why people can start finally using it and actually unlock the true potential of uh, mobile phone cameras. Because now it's not actually about folk calling people or about texting so much. Now phone is about cameras, right? It's about your camera. Exactly. Absolutely. We don't know what about in the, this or this model. like. Phone wise, so who has the better which camera? Which has a better camera? <laughs> how many lenses they have? Yeah. How However, many filters? How many? Exactly. <laughs> However, without uh, uh, possibility to shoot raw, uh, this potential of these cameras uh, stays quite locked. It's limited. Exactly, yeah. it's limited. So uh, with dot photon, this potential could be truly unlocked, which is great. Uh, and uh, photographer, like you know, people say the best camera is the one you have with you. This is our the smartphones these days. Yeah. So we can really, really, really make it the best camera <laughs> in all senses. So how does it work? There's an app, correct? Yeah, yeah for now there's, there's an app. There's an app for everything, right? Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's an app for everything. For so we, we, as I said, it was quite hard to, you know, compression is something quite uh, abstract, right? It's hard to see it. So we thought, okay, we have to show to people somehow and exactly which camera do we always carry with ourselves? That's our iPhone. Mm. So we uh, calibrated the camera uh, of the iPhone uh, and... Um, I started to sell the app and now it's actually on, uh, for free for a couple of weeks. So, um, and uh, uh, this is our demo tool mostly because people, so people can try, can have these files and uh, uh, have, a, have a look how it behaves, you know, how the images behave in post-production. Earlier we mentioned JPEG XS, which I said we would get back to. Yep. And I bring it up because it uh, was out just recently, the, yep. the announcement of this uh, technology. 
by a, a professor at EPFL. What makes it different from yours? I mean, it sounds to me like it does the same thing. Yeah, so it's, it's um, uh, first of all, I think it's absolutely great because uh, it means that it's, um, and actually, so yeah, yesterday and as well, Apple announced some other video format yesterday as well. So um, it means the compression is really in the air. There is a huge market need for it because we rely more and more on images. And uh, our future is probably code, AI, and images. So, uh, and but we and the images are getting better and better. But the size grows with the quality, right? So we have to compress. We have to find the compromise. Uh, JPEG is a great format by itself. It is tuned for a human eye and for non-professional applications. This is great. And uh, what they do now, they work on uh, on um, the, the speed, you know, on the streaming and all these uh, uh, virtual reality applications. This is something we uh, don't concentrate on because Dot Forum has a different role. Dot Forum cares about full quality uh, preservation. We have a special scientific proof that all the information which is valuable, which, which hits the image sensor, is preserved. And this is, the, so it's a certification program we have. So to our clients, we certify that the whole, whole information mm -hmm. has been preserved. So it's not, uh, because JPEG is only visually lossless. However, there are some artifacts which might appear. We don't know, we haven't seen the format yet. Mm -hmm. So, and I think what would be great is that dot photon uh, combined with these new formats, you know, we have a great compression ratio, we have a higher compression ratio. The GPEG access is okay. 6 to 1 and we have 10 to 1. So, and uh, uh, with their uh, low latency uh, possibility, capabilities could truly help to make imaging to like next level, you know, and to unlock potential of imaging to different applications. So you're not necessarily threatened? No, not at all. Okay, and you see a possibility for collaboration? Yes, yes. and I think it's great that Switzerland uh, is, uh, you know, in the forefront uh, in the image compression. Speaking of Switzerland, earlier we also mentioned very briefly Venture Labs, which took you to San Francisco recently with other Swiss um, startups, yeah. so to speak. What was that like for you? What kind of feedback did you get? Um, that was amazing from both points of view, from the point of view of meeting top level investors. I honestly didn't expect meeting partners of top level uh, investment firms in the Silicon Valley. So it's basically the best in the world, right? And have the feedback, uh, spend some time with them, learn a lot and apply this knowledge for our future uh, investors meetings. And for us, it was very valuable on the feedback and the contacts. So we had some, we are, we, since we're in the middle of fundraising now, we uh, were discussing some uh, possibility of fundraising with American investors as well. And the second thing which was, uh, which truly amazed me is the level, a high level of Swiss tech. And I think it was a general feedback. How, how is Switzerland perceived there? Um, I think we are perceived as a, a deep tech country. Uh, because there are a lot of uh, lifestyle consumer applications in there. However, all top 10 startups are based on the real science, on the real scientific knowledge, which is actually, and the, normally there are a few PhD, like, you know, in the, in the co-founders <laughs> team. So I think uh, even the American investors were quite impressed by the high level of technology we have. So made in Switzerland yes. matters. Yes, it does, <laughs> truly does. Absolutely. Now, just to wrap up, you're one of the few uh, women that have sat across from me at a tech talk <laughs> for one reason or the other. Do you, what has your experience been? Have you? I think, um, yeah, I was the only woman actually in the Swiss national startup team, tech team. Mm -hmm. So um, my experience for now in Switzerland is good. Uh, however, I think uh, there is more to be done. Uh, probably not with the, uh, female founders uh, like my age. However, like this girl I photographed for Dot Photon, uh, he really likes coding. I think that would be amazing if uh, those girls could be encouraged to go and to create their companies and to code if they want to code and do the research they want to do. So there'll be more uh, female founders uh, in the future. I think that's the most valuable thing now. All right, great. And just a one-liner on the future, which is you're going back to Silicon Valley. Yes, that's true. In the fall. Yeah, I'm going for sure in the fall, probably even earlier. Okay. So we're going with the IMD uh, EMBA program for startups. And we're going to have some meetings already fixed up with uh, some of uh, potential clients uh, uh, who we managed to meet during our uh, recent trip. So for the future, we're going to release a software for photographers this summer. 
And um, yeah, I hope there are some uh, thrilling announcements to, to, to follow within the next month.